Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. You know, I continue to be impressed by XRP's performance when you take into consideration the degree to which it's been endlessly attacked, especially by the SEC for two plus years. In fact, take a look at this headline from the Crypto Basic, making the point. Despite the case, XRP up over 100% since SEC lawsuit against Ripple. And I think it's just a pretty clear illustration that those of us that are still here and still paying attention, I think we know, I mean, <laughs> I kind of hate to use this phrase, it's overplayed, but we know what we hold. Like, it is literally true. And, and sometimes I just, I get irritated by the phrase a little bit because it's used to mean something that sounds more out in conspiracy theory land. A lot of those types of people use it. But I do know what I hold, and I do understand the degree to which it's used, uh, useful today. I understand the potential for it to be increasingly useful, including in how it's being positioned as a bridge currency to uh, help legacy finance. Yes, I, I understand what I hold. I, I sure as hell do. And I think the fact that so many of you out there listening right now and many others in our community understand it, that's why it is still where it is. Up, despite, and mind you, uh, so we were at you know, going into... Uh, you know, positive price land, you know, uh, that, you know, what was like the, if you want to call it like a mini alt season, it wasn't like a full blown alt season, like 2017, but in 2022, going into early 2021, that's when the alts that took off ultimately did. And so XRP eh, sort of participated, but, uh, but the point is we were in a, you know, a happier times in terms of price action. Now we're either, you know, at the bottom of the bear market or close to it. And it's still up to like compared to that. To me, that's actually pretty incredible, all things considered. It's easy to feel defeated with all this nonsense that we had to put up with for over two years. But I, I really firmly believe that this is a strong indication that people broadly do get this. And that's why when you saw Judge Torres' ruling just a few days ago in the Daubert motions, you saw that XRP price held while the, re while the rest of the market was panicking. And fine, even XRP did start to go down after three days of, you know, just, a, you know, massive pressure. But it took all that time. And in the meantime... It, well, most of crypto is going down. It was just going sideways. So I think people have placed their bets and we're <laughs> by and large anticipating a very bright future for XRP, including in the United States. But um, there's just been some crazy stuff happening, especially with uh, the, you know, the biggest new, you know, the biggest scare scare news lately being a Silicon Valley bank. I talked about that in depth in a video earlier today. And I talked about it literally yesterday and, and things continue to develop. So I think we're going to be talking about it for some time to come. And I actually even have a story I'll share towards the end of the video about Elon Musk potentially buying Silicon Valley Bank. And, you know, it's just the degree to which it's he's serious. I don't know, but it's it started the same as like when somebody, you know, posited the idea that he should buy Twitter. He was like, maybe I'll look into that, basically. And then he did. He bought Twitter. So I'm like, if he's. He's saying he might buy a bank. I'm like, well, maybe he's going to buy a bank. What the hell do I know? <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see what the implications of that would be. And, and also, one additional thing that I've been saying for some time is that, you know, if we're going to see another low below the roughly $15,500 for Bitcoin that we saw after the FTX collapse, if we're actually going to take out that low, I've been saying the only way that it's going to happen is if we have a wild card event, you know, a black swan event. Is this what we're seeing right now with Silicon Valley Bank? Well, I've got uh, an article covering some perspective from an analyst that seems to think that this indeed may be the case. So we'll see. But um, before sharing additional ideas, I, I do want to be clear. I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So I record this video, XRP's at $0.36, cents, Bitcoin at $20,184. But I will note... Uh, it got as low as $19,784 within the last 24 hours. Um, XRP actually got as low as, what, 30, just over $0.36. Cents. Uh, market cap for the asset class, $941 billion. Bitcoin dominance, 41.42%. And people are fearful. And that shouldn't be surprising given all the terrible news that we've had over the last several days. Crypto fear and greed index at 33 out of 100. Absolutely people back in fear. You know, with the, the, the scary news from, uh, you know, Jerome Powell about interest rates, how you, know, you can expect those to keep going up. And then you had the collapse of Silvergate Bank. And then you had the collapse of um, Silicon Valley Bank. And these are, you know, crypto-related banks. I mean, they're, they're well, to be clear, they're real, like, quote-unquote, traditional banks. They just happen to be uh, working closely with firms in the world of crypto. But they are legacy banks in that sense. They're just more forward-thinking and had been... 
uh, you know, engaged with crypto customers, uh, they're gone. And again, I've already covered why, so I don't want to rehash that in this video, but it's causing tremendous fault, including with stable coins. And it's worth at least mentioning, even though I'm not going to explain why in this video, because I already did earlier today. Uh, USDC stable coin got as low as, got as down as low as 87 cents, the lowest it's ever been in history. Crazy stuff going on. But you've got XRP. And in fact, so like this article where they're talking about XRP being up over 100% since the lawsuit began, they're, they're considering that from the point where it bottomed out after the SEC sued. Technically, that's what they're really getting at because XRP is around 60 cents. It got down to about 17 cents. And so from there, yeah, up quite a bit. And then the, they shared this from XRP community member Stefan Huber. He, he used the Wayback Machine to pull up the price of XRP on December 29th, 2020. So you're, you're looking at a week after the, the actual lawsuit was filed. And here you can see at that particular moment when the snapshot was taken anyway, um, XRP was 18 cents. And the circulating supply is, I'll choose a round number, 45 billion circulating supply. Now compare that today, uh, or at least at the time that he was recording this, 37 cent XRP and a circulating supply of close to 51 billion. So you have even more XRP circulating and it's in a worse time for the market and XRP is still up over 100% despite all of the stuff that it's been through and it's still in the top 10. Look, I think that there are enough people out there. It's pretty clear, the writing's on the wall. We all believe in what we believe in and for damn good reasons and we're optimistic that what should be done will be done when it comes to the SEC lawsuit. And uh, side note, I did want to mention this too because it caught my eye. Uh, this is, uh, it's, you know, way back machine pulling up coin market cap and they track the number of cryptocurrencies in existence and at the time uh, that this this was grabbed so this is again december 29th 2020 there were 8128 cryptocurrencies tracked by coin market cap there are now over 20,000. that escalated quickly i would say um and then there was this from a chart analyst income sharks uh yesterday at so it was about 12 hours ago uh or a little over that uh yeah, here we go. 5.27 p.m. yesterday. He wrote, Bitcoin, volume is coming in. Think this could play out by end of March, if not sooner. And so he's noting that he, he still, because he's been saying for some time, he thinks that 20,000 is pretty strong support. So, we, you know, the fact that it's going a hair below that, it's in the realm of what he's talking about and still thinks that that's going to hold as support. He's very firm on that. Even after all of this news, um, he's, he's very firm on that. And I, I guess I hope he's right, you know. And then he had an update at 9.03 p.m. just a few hours later, noting that Bitcoin at the time anyway was going uh, up. And he said, and there's the start of the move up. Just nonstop fear and doom and gloom at the bottom. Where was this at $25,000? Which really is a fair question, but to be honest with you here, at $25,000, yeah, fine, market was a bit happier, so you wouldn't expect the scary stories anyway. It's just, and he's pointing out something that just is kind of silly in general. In this case... Because look, when when markets correctly go to the downside, then whatever is happening in the moment, that is what you pin the downside on. That's the reason it happened. In this case, real things actually did happen, and it caused or exacerbated the downside move. So again, to be clear, a lot of times when you see cryptos moving to the downside, it was just going to happen anyway. It's a bunch of irrational humans making uh, emotional buying and selling decisions. In this case, it's that coupled with the fact that real world scary stuff happened. Like I said, with uh, you know the announcement from uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Silvergate Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, you know, going belly up. Not terribly surprising. But then he also pointed out this, which makes a ton of sense to me. He says, you can tell crypto Twitter doesn't know uh, much on topics because they all just repeat each other. It's a wild game of telephone. Now all banks are bad. Everything is crashing. Stable coins all are going to zero, etc. FUD spreads faster because fear is a powerful emotion. I'm not an expert on banks, but I know not all have terrible risk management, just like not all exchanges are as bad as FTX. And so I, I do think he's right in that sense. And I, I don't know for sure if we're going to have this black swan event here and it's like maybe it already happened where we just we're yet to see the fallout here. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to pretend to, but uh, I don't find that to be probable that we're going to have a series of catastrophic failures of banks. Yes, two, fine. Just two, two just happened now. But most banks like their their risk exposure is different and again i don't want to repeat the video that i made but it had to do with like in silicon valley in, in particular the silicon valley bank it had to do with where they put customer funds and they didn't even do anything illegal that i've seen you know just going into government bonds 
and then you know jacking up the interest rates you know the fed chair did or the fed did in general after the fomc meetings so you know that doesn't mean that that's going to happen with every other in fact the um the clientele of most banks is not even close to the clientele of those banks not even close they cater to crypto um and and uh i just it's just a different you know they're all gonna have different approaches to risk management in silicon valley frankly Silicon Valley Bank, they did make some poor decisions. Not that they broke the law, but they did make some poor decisions that ultimately led to their demise, as I cited in an earlier video. So uh, it, does it make sense to actually panic? Are we going to have that black swan event? Are we going to have this wild card event that causes prices to go lower? Maybe, but I just, I don't see it yet. I, I don't, I don't see it yet. Are we just going to keep having a chain of, I don't see why that would happen though. There's, there are, there are a select number of uh, crypto friendly banks and that's not most banks because look if you're going to have there <laughs> if, if you were going to have a series of banks go belly up just in the united states just in general which i do not believe is about to happen i do not believe that if if that were to happen yes that would cause panic in all sorts of markets including equities and then crypto would follow and yes you'd have a disastrous move to the downside maybe you take it out to a new level is is that probable uh, you know is, is usdc going to cease to exist well there's been a run on it but i i just I'm not convinced it's going to at this point because I don't have data that would make me think that that's the probable move. I acknowledge it's possible. Is that going to happen now? I, do, I don't think it's probable at this particular point in, unless USDC is outright lying. Uh, it's in all light, you know, in terms of it being back the way that it is, it should be fine. The biggest concern is the amount of money that it's backed by held by Silicon Valley Bank. Is that enough to absolutely make it cease to exist? Would there be a run on it to, to, to the degree that it would actually literally get to the point where now confidence is irreversibly destroyed? I'm skeptical of that. I'm just saying, so that's why like, I'll, 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 I like to hear the disaster scenarios from people that believe that there's, there's something like that's possible and so I'm going to share it with you. I'm not sold on that concept though. So look at this headline from the Daily Huddle. Over $460 billion in Bitcoin and crypto could evaporate in worst case scenario, warns analyst Benjamin Cowan. So this is what he's talking about here is truly some disaster type stuff. And I try to I try to never say never when it comes to crypto. So I guess I'll technically do that. But I do not think that this is what we are going to see occur. But again, this is a popular analyst. Uh, with one of the biggest crypto YouTube channels on the entire damn planet. Let's see what he has to say. Widely followed crypto an analyst Benjamin, Benjamin Cowan is identifying a worst case scenario for the crypto markets as prices spiral downward. In a new strategy session, Cowan tells his 784,000 YouTube subscribers that the crypto markets could give up hundreds of billions of dollars in a correction similar to the dot-com collapse. Quote, there are a lot of similarities between the tech stock collapse back in the dot-com era and the crypto collapse that we're seeing today, end quote. Cowan looks at the performance of the NASDAQ during the dot-com era and draws parallels to today's crypto markets. He uses the market rally and decline percentages from the dot-com era to indicate where the total market cap for Bitcoin and other cryptos could be heading. According to the analyst, the total market cap for all of all crypto assets may be in a position where it witnesses one more capitulation phase, similar to what happened to the NASDAQ in 2022 when it crashed by about 30% before bottoming out. Yeah, and so this is one thing I actually did mean to mention in my video earlier where I was talking about Silicon Valley Bank. We don't know what the fallout was going to be. Um, the one thing I, I wanted to mention that could happen, not that I wanted to, but could happen, is there is a potential for a bank bailout, and if that happens... Uh, in theory, could avert this, you know, some sort of catastrophic fault that he's talking about here. But even without that, I'm not necessarily convinced that it's going to happen. I mean, maybe, I mean, you, you are talking about um, 90, I believe it was 97% of deposits at Silicon Valley Bank not covered by FDIC because it, 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 they exceed that $250,000 threshold. So they're, they're not covered. So, but is that enough? Would that be enough to just take down crypto? To that degree, because look, if crypto goes down to that degree, I'm thinking equities are taking a major beating too. So again, I'm not sold on this narrative, but I'm just sharing it with you. But here's this quote. Where would it put the total crypto market cap if we went 30% lower below the prior low? 
It would put the total market cap at around $500 billion, which represents a sizable correction from the current levels. That's 30% below the prior low. From the current levels, that would represent another 40% to 50% correction. And again, we know that these percentages are subject to slight changes, like it's not going to be exact. So maybe it could be 40% down from here if it's going to follow, or maybe it could be 50% down and you get and get you closer to $400 billion. Now, folks, again, we're a little shy of $1 trillion right now, too. so to go to $400 to $500 billion, that would be a massive, that'd be a massive hit. Um, now, I will say, should such a thing happen, which I am not convinced it will, but if it does, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, I'm here for it. I'm here rain or shine anyway, but I'll tell you, I buy during capitulation events because I don't ever believe it's the end of the world. I believe that others believe it's the end of the world during those events. And since I disagree, I take advantage of reduced prices and I buy stuff. That's it. And so if this happens, I will absolutely be enticed. I still have a boatload of capital on the sidelines just in case such a thing happens. I deployed a chunk of it in uh, in November and I publicly spoke about that when it was like, okay, everybody's fearful. I'm going to buy into the capitulation event and I'm glad I did. If we actually get another major one, okay. Because I understand that however long it takes, and I don't know, you know market's still going to trend up. It's not the end of the United States economy. It's not the end of crypto. Things are going to bounce back. So when they're cheap, I'm going to buy because I have a boatload of cash on the sideline. That's exactly what I'll do. So I'm here and happy either way. It's going to be fine. And if we don't get that opportunity, you know, my bags are seriously packed. I just, I'm happy either way. I really am. It's just like, let life go on and just, I'm just going to experience it. I don't get to control it. I'm just living through it. And then there's this, Elon Musk open to acquiring collapsed Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> I don't feel the need to read the article. I just kind of wanted to make the point and we'll see what happens. I just want to mention it basically. But somebody wrote on Twitter, I think Twitter should buy Silicon Valley Bank and become a digital bank. And then Elon Musk said, I'm open to the idea. Okay, so again, if it were anyone else, you might roll your eyes, but it's Elon Musk. And that's that's that was basically the same style of the opening that led to him ultimately purchasing Twitter for whatever it was, $44 billion or whatever the outrageous price was. And he got the loans for it and all that crap. So the idea of him, if he's saying that, I don't think that he's just saying it to say it. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. But that would be that be a truly interesting dynamic. And I also, um, I, I'm somewhat skeptical though, because this is different than just buying Twitter. This is like, when you're talking about a bank, the federal government is restrictive as to who can actually purchase a, you know, a bank, especially a distressed bank like that. So I don't know if he's even looked into it. So maybe he's dead serious, but he may not have looked into whether or not it would even be possible. But, you know, I'd imagine with him being Elon Musk, uh, in terms of getting the funds together to pull something like together, if he really wanted to do it, you know, outside of any sort of restrictions from the government, this or that, if he really wants to do it, maybe he really could do it. So it's just another thing to consider. It's just a crazy world. It, it's like the number of ridiculous developments <clears throat> over this past week. It's just, <clears throat> excuse me. It, it's rare to have a week like this with this number of real things. So like the, the volatility happens all the time. You get a volatility like this to the downside. Like, okay, well, it's crypto. But to have these, like, like this stream, like day after day after day, and there's new news that's horrific every single day. I mean, I don't care on a personal level because it's just like, I didn't do it. I'm here. I'm just living my life. Uh, but the fact that the horrific news is happening, like this actually is not that common. I've been in crypto over half a decade. You normally don't get this string of serious events that actually cause, causes the price to go down because it did. Real world stuff here did cause the prices to go down. But I'm, look, again, Happy to be here. We, like I've been saying, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record. I'm happy. Why am I happy? Because, well, markets tend to trend upward, and they're going to keep doing that. I firmly believe that despite massive pullbacks, however long it takes. And this year, even in the short term, I think we've got a lot to look forward to in all likelihood in terms of this uh, SECV Ripple case ending. I'm very optimistic it's going to be to the positive. XRP hopefully relisted uh, you know, on United States exchanges, and you can imagine what that'll do for price action. So a lot to look forward to still. I'm just not going to lose sleep over this crap like a lot of you, you know, the typical retail speculators out there do. I just, I just look at the world differently than them. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.